Will heaven be on earth? Will heaven be on earth? Um, people may speak of spending eternity with God in heaven, and they may also speak of eternal punishment in hell. There has been a, a recent wave of theologians who deny that punishment for sin is eternal, and a number of others uh, who have written books countering that, uh, 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 that, 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 that whole idea with with titles such as um, whatever became of hell and erasing hell and things like that. So technically speaking, heaven and hell are not places of eternic, uh, eternal um, blessing or eternal torment. That, that's one thing you have to understand. But uh, heaven and hell refer to the places of the dead at this moment, okay? Because uh, if we check, if we check... Uh, we check um, the word hell is often trans is often used or translated a number of terms uh, uh, in a number of ways and in a number of terms. Okay, um, we have Sheol in the Old Testament. Okay, it's translated as Sheol in the whole Old Testament, and also Jehina or or Jehina or Hades or Tatars. In the New Testament, okay. Now these terms usually refer; these terms refer to um, a holding place for the dead. Jehina certainly adds the concept of torment, because when you look at uh, Revelation twenty verse uh, verse fourteen, it says, "And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire." This is the second death. So death and hell, hell itself will also be cast into the lake of fire, okay? So, we see that death and hell are cast into some place, which is this, the lake of fire. Not hell is a place of eternal torment, no. But in modern day usage, most people think of it as hell, the lake of fire. The concept of eternal punishment and separation from God is probably more important than whether the name attached to it is technically correct. Likewise, heaven is not the final destination for believers in Christ. In the second in the in the in the Old Testament, heaven usually refers to the heavens. Heavens, okay? Heavens. That is the sky or maybe what we would call space or some place up there, okay? Some place up there. So this came to be associated to where God is, okay? It came to be associated with like some place up there where God is. In Revelation, we see worship of God taking place in heaven. The worship of God taking place in heaven, that place up there. In chapters 4 and 5 of Revelation, but also the, the word heaven can also refer to the, to the sky. When Jesus ascended, he ascended into heaven. Okay? Like we can see in the book of Acts uh, 1 verses 11. Where did Jesus ascend? Acts 1 verses 11. See what the Bible says here. Which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Up there, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall also come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So Jesus ascended up there into a place where people say it's heaven. But this may simply mean that he went up without specifying that he went to a place which is called heaven. Likewise, when he returns, he will descend from the same heaven. Okay, when you'll be descending, see what the Bible says in First uh, Thessalonians uh, four sixteen. First Thessalonians four sixteen. It says, "For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the way He went, He will come back the same way. And in Second Corinthians chapter twelve, Paul tells us. He relates the experience of being caught up into the third heaven, which is the very abode of God. Likewise, also Hebrews, we see, it speaks of Jesus' ministry in heaven. 
Okay? Hebrews 1 3. See. Hebrews 1 3. Hebrews uh, 1 verses 3. It also speaks about Jesus' ministry in heaven. See, who's being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by when he had by himself purged our sins and sat down in the right hand of his majesty, of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he lay by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. You see, the ministry of Christ, he's already there, expressing his glory up there. Okay? And also, Hebrews 8.1, it explains more. Hebrews 8, verses 1, it explains more on the same. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty of heaven. A high priest. So Jesus is up there as the high priest doing some things. Okay? Are you seeing the point? Let me also show you more points. That uh, up in heaven is where Jesus is. And I want to show you that the heaven is not our eternal place. It, we have another eternal place, and I'm going to uh, show you this. For Christ has not entered into the holy pl places made with hands. You see, the holy places up there, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. So Jesus went up into heaven itself, now appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others, and so forth. So Jesus is up there in heaven. And he offered himself up. Okay? And uh, we see also, since 2 Corinthians 5.8 says that if believers are away from the body, that is, um, that is the dead, the, the, they are dead, they are at home with the Lord. Okay? Paul told us, away from the body, it's to be present with the Lord. Then it is accurate to say that a Christian who dies goes to heaven. Okay? However, heaven, heaven is not uh, the eternal home for the Christian. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 also points out that while in heaven, away from the body, we look forward to our resurrection body. When we are in heaven, we are away from the body. The body is uh, on the grave. So we look forward, we look forward to our resurrection body. Too often, eternity with God is pictured as sitting uh, on the clouds, uh, playing some harps and things like that. And uh, human beings were created with a physical body. And those who have become children of God by faith in Christ are waiting for new physical, material body. And we also know that the current heavens and the, and the earth, as referred to in Genesis 1-1, will be destroyed, okay, will be destroyed and replaced with new heavens and a new earth where righteousness shall dwell. Okay? It's written in uh, 2 Peter 3.12. 2 Peter, uh, Peter uh, 3 verse 12. See, there will be a new heaven. Okay? See, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the element shall uh, shall met with fervor and eat. Okay? We are looking for these heavens, these ones that we are in, they will be destroyed. Okay? And see, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. You see, we are going to have a new heaven and a new earth. So we're not going to be spirits in heaven. No, we're looking for to be rejoined back again to our bodies. Okay? And we will have a new heaven and a new earth. Which will be eternal home for the believer. So the imagery in uh, Revelation 21 and 22. Uh, seems to point to Eden like conditions. Once again. Because we see it's like God will dwell in among his people. It's like God will be dwelling again among his people. Adam and Eve were given the job of uh, attend, uh, attending to the garden. 
and subduing the earth before the fall. And there is every reason to believe that the people of God who inhabit the earth in resurrection bodies will continue the work of Adam and Eve. Okay? They will continue the work of uh, Adam and Eve before the fall. They will be enjoying the work they do the, and the unhindered fellowship with God. On the new earth, we will continue to work, learn, grow, develop, accomplish things. Since there were animals in Eden, there, there may very well be animals on the new heaven as well. You see, as an old song sing, says, uh, this world is not my home. I'm just uh, passing through. And uh, a few lines later, it says, if heavens is not my home, then the Lord, what, uh, then Lord, what will I do? You've, I'm sure you've heard this kind of song, which says that this world is not my home. And if this world is not my home, then Lord, what will I do? It is true that this world is not our home, but it will be technically correct to say that heaven is not our home either. When we die and go to heaven, okay, when we die and go to heaven, it too will be a place that we are just passing through as we wait our new bodies made to life, okay, we wait for our new bodies which will be made to, uh, to, to live, work and worship and a fellowship on the new earth. In this sense, what we think of as heaven, what we think for as heaven is a place of full joyment of the presence of God. And uh, it will not just be the eternal place, but later on God is going to create a new heaven and a new earth. What is there right now when you die and you go up in the skies? What is going? It's your soul. You don't have your body. Your body is left in the grave. But one day, one day, God is going to join up your body to your soul. And then now you'll have a physical body. And then you will be able again to stay in the presence of God on a new heaven and a new earth which will be created, fulfilling back, bringing back what initially was there in the Garden of Eden. I don't know if you understand the point. So, yes, there's, um, we know that we'll have a thousand years on this earth that we are in. When Jesus will come to rule here on, uh, on this earth for a thousand years. And after that, he will destroy this earth and the heavens and he will build everything new. Okay? He will build everything new because the Bible tells us and affirms to us that everything will be made new. Revelation 21 verse 1. Just see what it says here. New heaven and new earth. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and will, he will dwell with them. You see? He will tabernacle with men. He will dwell with men. And shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Are you seeing the point? So, let me just read to verse 5. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be there any more pain for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. All things new. Heaven and earth new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So you see, a new Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem is basically all of us who are believers, everybody will come out from the heavens and then come to their eternal dwelling place, which is on the new earth, okay, which will be created by God, where we will live, 
okay? We will live exactly how God wanted it to be from the beginning, okay? We will live there how God wanted it to be from the beginning. Because the Bible explains to us and says, look, that God's dwelling place is now among his people, all the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. And he will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the older things will be passed away. You see, God will make everything new. Everything new. And return us back to the same way he wanted it to be from the Garden of Eden. So it is most importantly, very most important to note that heaven comes to earth. Okay? The heaven will come to earth. That heaven that we dream of. Okay? The new Jerusalem. It will come. The whole heaven that we have always dreamed of. And the things that we always hear that they are in heaven. Where now they are held temporarily until God will create a new earth here. So that heaven will come down on earth. But this will only be through God's miraculous intervention and re uh, creation. There's no amount of human effort or uh, as, as noble it may be in some cases. It will not be able to create. There's, there's no way a man can be able to bring this heaven on earth. You see, right now we say, I, I will give you heaven on earth. I'll bring you I'll bring you heaven here and things like that. We we try to use these words uh, to try and uh, you know mean how you know we will make the earth a good place but it is only God himself who will bring the new Jerusalem the new uh, the, the the new uh Jerusalem or the heaven he will bring it to earth okay So we cannot manufacture utopia through the work it's only through the work of the Holy Spirit that Christians have the access to God and experience freedom from many effects of sin. But only, but still, remember, we'll still have a glimpse of what is yet to come. When we go to heaven, we go there. When you die, you go there. You will experience something of what will be coming later on when God will create a new heaven and a new earth. And then the Jerusalem will come down here. The new Jerusalem will come down here to his eternal place, which is uh, now the new earth. I don't know if I've made some sense to you. So, in conclusion, we understand that uh, the heaven, will the heaven be on earth? I will say that God will create a new earth and then he will bring down everything, all the glory and all the goodies which are in heaven above there. He will bring them now to the eternal resting place of man where man will stay and live and God will be visiting there. He will be dwelling with man. There will be no more sea. The sea, you know, the, uh, above us we have a dome. And that dome is the one which separates the earth and the heavens. Okay? So it will not be there. That dome will not be there anymore. And the sea above, just go and check my other video on um, the shape of um, the universe, what they have lied to us all through. That uh, the Bible tells us there is some sea up there. Okay? So that sea will be taken out. And there will be now... No restriction between heaven and earth. And God will be dwelling with his people. He'll be coming from heaven. He comes down. You see, heaven is a place for God. And earth is a place for man. So God will be coming down and up and will be, you see, it, it will be exactly how the Garden of Eden was supposed to be. Okay? Hope that has been able to open up our eyes. And if you're still there and you're not saved and you don't know how you'll partake in all these goodies, please believe the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how and why Jesus had to die. Why did Jesus have to die? The Bible says he died for your sins. Okay? He was buried and rose again, as the scripture indicate. And how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. 
Why was the blood important? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And why do we have to shed blood? Leviticus 17.11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when you take out the blood, you have taken out the flesh, uh, the, the life. So why do we have to take out the life and someone dies? Because the wages of sin is death. But 2,000 years ago, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So that whosoever will believe in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. All you need to do is confess to Christ what you have understood. And tell him that you really now trust him that he died for your sins. That's the full gospel. And once you do that, my friend, you're saved. And all these goodies will be upon you. Hope it's been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to understand. God bless you. And um, I, I also ask you kindly if you can subscribe to the channel to watch more videos as we post them each and every day. And also you can share to your friends so that they can also be encouraged as you have been. God bless you and have a good time.